On today's show, we'll explain why General Motors has a huge advantage over Google and Apple, how Tesla unlocks more battery range with another over-the-air update, and what colors could show up on future cars. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily for May 6th of 2016. Back in January, General Motors teamed up with ride-sharing service Lyft. At the time, the two companies revealed plans to develop an autonomous fleet of on-demand vehicles. And now we've got some more details. The Detroit News reports that within the next couple of years, GM and Lyft will test a network of self-driving electric bolts in California. The EVs will be equipped with autonomous technology from Cruise Automation, a tech company that GM recently acquired. And this shows the enormous advantage traditional OEMs have over the tech companies. Automakers only have to add autonomous technology to the vehicles they make to be in the game. Tech companies have to come up with their own cars or form partnerships with existing car companies. And that means the tech companies may not be quite the disruptors they fancy themselves to be. Speaking of General Motors, in the U.S. market, it took a bold step by offering a 2.8-liter four-cylinder turbo diesel engine in the Chevrolet Colorado and GMC Canyon pickup trucks. So with the VW diesel scandal and cheap gasoline prices, how are those diesels selling? Well, the take rate isn't all that great, between 7 and 9 percent, but it is growing. Month-over-month sales of diesel Colorados were up 26% in April, while diesel canyons were up 11%. GM spent a lot of money bringing that diesel to the market, but it's a $4,000 option. At that price, they've got to be making good money on that engine. By the way, in my test driving, I got around 25 miles to the gallon combined, and that's pretty good for a pickup truck. Speaking of mid-sized pickup trucks, next week we're going to be reporting on the all-new Honda Ridgeline. It's a unit body truck that's based on the same platform as the Honda Pilot and Acura MDX. And while all the information is under embargo until Monday, we can tell you right now, this is a hell of a good truck and it's going to appeal to a lot of people who otherwise would never consider a pickup. Hey, we'll be back with more right after this. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. We're all familiar with untapping unused power from our gasoline and diesel engines via performance chips or computer reflashing. And Tesla's doing something similar with the Model S. Turns out the EV maker has been equipping the freshly updated Model S's with 75 kilowatt hour battery packs, but it's selling them as 70 kilowatt models. Now through a $3,000 over the air update, customers with the larger packs will be able to tap into that extra five kilowatt hours. That is good for a 20 to 25 mile increase and a total range of about, of about 260 miles. And this also shows just how good Tesla is at upselling its customers to plunk down several grand more for extra bells and whistles. Car buyers around the world continue to buy vehicles with conservative colors like white and silver. But paint supplier BASF says it's seeing a slight shift in North America towards bolder colors, specifically paints with hues that change depending on the point of view. Its top three predictions for new colors in the region include black with a silvery look. Actually, black is the most researched color for online shoppers. Another color is called primordial red, which is a deep blood red color. And then lastly, there's a silver paint with green and blue elements. And it's not just North America that's getting more adventurous with color choices. BASF sees blues becoming more popular in Europe and a beige color with blue-green accents happening in Asian countries. A new report from Consumers Union, which owns Consumer Reports, shows that the 2025 CAFE regulations will save car drivers thousands of dollars. On average, 
Car owners will save about $3,000. Truck owners will save about $4,200. And that's assuming gasoline prices are around $3 a gallon. According to EPA and NHTSA estimates, on average, OEMs will have to spend about $1,700 per car and about $1,600 per truck for the technology to meet these standards. But others, such as the Center for Automotive Research in Ann Arbor, says the costs could be considerably higher than that. Coming up next, if you're a traditional automaker, should you be buying all that autonomous technology from Silicon Valley, or should you develop it on your own? And that is coming up next. Lear Connexus is the new application suite in vehicle connectivity designed to deliver over-the-air software updates and more from Lear Corporation's eSystems, leaders in power and data management. Suppliers provide the overwhelming majority of components that go into a car. But with autonomy right around the corner, do automakers want to outsource that technology or make it? On AutoLine this week, our special guest is Steve Kiefer, the Global Vice President of Purchasing and Supply at General Motors. And in the following clip, he explains how the company balances what should remain in-house and what it wants suppliers or other partners to contribute to its autonomous vehicles. I would say, if I were to say it simply, I think our general philosophy would be characterized as um, Activities that will differentiate our vehicles, will differentiate General Motors in the marketplace, those are the things we want to control quite closely. Uh, areas that um, are probably more generic to the industry, and I could cite a few of them. I mean, maybe you, you might say mapping technology, for example, is a good one. Mm -hmm. That's one that um, you know we, we said publicly at uh, CES in January that we had some concepts that we were working with Mobileye on. That's a business model that might be good to share with the industry. It might be good for society, it might be good for the industry. But there's other examples of of very specific um, uh, uh, activities that impact the user experience that will really differentiate the GM vehicles, and those will be the ones that we want to keep in-house. In but the list in the space of autonomous, because I just kind of hit on two sort of generic things, when you get to the sensors or uh, different algorithms or different safety features, you can imagine quite a rich dialogue on every one of these. And I would say that for the most part, it's a bit of a case-by-case -case basis, but that high-level philosophy, I think, would kind of characterize what we're doing. You can watch that entire episode with Steve Kiefer right now on our website, Autoline.tv, or you can check it out on our YouTube channel. But anyway, that wraps up today's show. Thanks for watching, and go out and have a great weekend. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.